It's go time! Implementing Voice over IP and Wireless Access Point VLAN changes. So it's late at night. It is 9.45 in the evening. Uh, got here, got so excited to get going that I just threw a slide up here. I actually have no slides for this because we're just going to stay in the live interface. Uh, and I was like, oh man, I need an image for this right here because I always put an image there and I couldn't find one. So I just threw up a rack. This has nothing to do. It's just a random rack, but it's so beautifully cabled. I don't know if you've ever cabled something like this before. When it's done, you just take your hand and go and all those just it feels comforting. I, I don't know what to say about it. So enough on that. By the time it's said and done, we will have implemented the VLAN changes that we designed for the voice over IP phones and wireless access points. So I want to take you back to our game plan real quick. Come with me, take a look at the spreadsheet that's in Microsoft Word. So it's not very spreadsheet-ish. As of right now, we have communicated with the office. They know it's going to be down. We've got the existing VLANs already documented and mapped to the new VLAN tags. We've prepared a copy and paste configuration for a switch. And we, we did this in another one of the nuggets. I didn't do the configuration for the router because the router is actually uh, a uh, ubiquity router. And it has a pretty cool graphic interface that will make it a lot faster than going command line. Uh, I upgraded the switch firmware, which is a tedious process, but that's now done. So we are right here. I'm going to move our management PC, which is the PC that I'm talking to you on right now into the management VLAN. Now, let me, let me give you a, a feel of what this looks like. So right here is the computer that I'm talking to you on right now. This is going to be our management PC. Uh, that is actually a picture of an Arizona Haboob. My friend took that picture. It's called a Haboob. It's the closest thing we have in Arizona to a natural disaster where a big old dust storm comes and you can't see anything. It lasts like an hour and it's all great cloudy slides kind of fun so anyway that that really happened so i'm going to take you down here we've got uh, an ip phone that's going to be on um one of our vlans that we're going to test with some sour cream and onion chips and then down here is the switch that actually feeds this now um i'm not sure how well you can see how close up that is but uh, you can see that right here i've got two ports this is the lag that comes in from the outside switch where all the vlan tags are coming in actually let me take you up to the uh, web interface for this switch this is it right here. I've accessed the web GUI. It is a ubiquity switch. Uh, my computer right now is plugged into port 3. That's this port right here, which you can see is in VLAN 100. Now, same thing with port 4, and then port 5 is where we go back into the management VLAN. That's VLAN 10. That's the one that's going to remain there. 5, 6, and then those are our lag ports that, that connect up to uh, the rest of the network, right? So moving this to the management VLAN should be as easy as moving it from port 3 to port 5. And I'm going to do that right now. We'll just switch this over right there. It should get a new IP address and be on that management VLAN. So come back up here, do an IP config and hit enter. And we are looking at the LAN adapter, which now is in the management subnet. It's 10.2.25.1 is that subnet. It's getting that correct IP address. We're good. We've moved our management PC over. Now, this is actually one that I added between the planning phase and this phase. See, I actually started walking around the office and I'm like, whoa, IP phones. They're going to be a problem because they're actually assigned to VLAN 2. They're going to move to VLAN 20. But if I cut the internet and change all the VLANs before they get reprovisioned, that means I've got to manually go around and reset every phone and have it re-register. I don't want to do that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to access our SIP server. That's kind of our server that we've named to control these phones. This is where I am. And you don't need to worry about how all this SIP server works or anything about voice over IP. Main thing I'm going after is the provision VLANs. Uh, because right now I've got this this one called Voice 2. And what happens is these phones actually check in once an hour. So I'm going to change it right now. And all the phones across the office will slowly but surely check in, download the configuration over the next hour. And they should jump to VLAN 20 by the time I'm ready to change the router and cut the VLAN access from there. All I'm going to do is jump into this and change it from VLAN 2 to VLAN 20, submit those changes, and as each one of these phones checks in and downloads its configuration, it'll be like, oh, I got a new VLAN, and make that jump over there. Now, that's going to kill them because I haven't set up VLAN 20 across the rest of the network, but that's okay. We're in an outage window. All right, now I've taken you over to our wireless access controller. As you can see, we actually use this controller to manage many of our customers, and right now I've got it focused in on VIA. And how you do this is going to be different based on what wireless solution you're using. If you've got Cisco Meraki, it's one way. If you've got a Cisco Enterprise Wireless Access Point, it's another way. We're using, again, Ubiquiti Wireless Access Point. So I'm going to come into this interface, hit the Settings, 
go over to the wireless networks and change the wireless LAN group down to US 3001. We actually have two different wireless LAN groups, uh, one for our main office, which is actually over in what we call suite 109 and 110, that side of the building. And I'm gonna edit this SSID called via guest, that's our guest Wi-Fi. edit and change the VLAN from three to 30. We went from that small size business up to something that's a little more scalable. Scroll down and save that configuration. The second thing I want to do is go to via internal. I'm going to change that VLAN over to VLAN 40. It was actually uh, blended into the management VLAN before because we were lazy and didn't follow a good design when we did this. So I'll click on save. And right now, all the wireless access points, if I click on over and, and look at them, yep, sure enough, those are all provisioning because they're downloading their new configuration. And frankly, they're booting all of the clients off right now because they're all going to VLANs that don't exist yet. So right now, the management of these, these wireless access points is still up but all the clients connected to them are down again it's okay because we're in that outage window uh, next one I want to do is jump on over to suite 113 we only have one wireless access point over here that's my side of the building and I will change that we've got uh, my CBT VLAN which is currently a hundred that's gonna go to one of the flex VLANs which is that VLAN 50 so jump over here and modify it edit that guy drop him down to 50 and again since I've hardlined my management PC right here it's not going to be a problem. Uh, it'll lose wireless access, but that's fine. I'm hardlined right into the management VLAN. That's why I did that. And by the way, if you don't have a management VLAN, like I have 10 already going through the network that I'm keeping to do all the management so I don't lose access when I'm making these VLAN changes, if you don't have that, that's fine. You just have one more step beforehand to get that. You want to set up a management VLAN that you can always access the switches, always access your routers. Otherwise, you're going to be going to console ports all around the building which is not as fun as doing what we're doing right now. Uh, so I'll go right here via guest. We'll make the change on this side too. It's gonna be moved over to VLAN 30. We'll save that and apply it. And via internal, that's gonna go over to VLAN 40. Use VLAN 40, scroll down and save. My password manager keeps popping up, it's so annoying. Now we've got this SD network that actually just hangs around for uh, things that we're doing kind of behind the scenes. It's our management wireless. So uh, right now, and actually this is, this is worth mentioning, uh, all of these wireless access points right here, um, which you can see right now, Suite 113 entry is provisioning. Oh, we lost one. Uh, oh, good. <laughs> it's back online. It probably just rebooted itself. Um, so um, I lost my train of thought. What was I talking about? Oh yeah, that SD wireless SSID. So these wireless access points, as you can see from this IP address, you saw when I moved my computer into the management VLAN, it got 10.225.1.126. That's our management VLAN. These things are all natively, meaning they all go straight into VLAN 10 as their native VLAN. So when I set the SSID of SD, Click on that wireless network, suite 113. When I set this SD to no VLAN tag, that means it's gonna come in on whatever the native VLAN is for the wireless access point, which in our case is gonna be VLAN 10. So when we have a device that attaches to that SD network, it's automatically gonna be on that native VLAN 10. And that works out great. So we've done our magic. The network is going down. We've implemented the VLAN changes for the voice over IP phones and wireless access points. We can check these guys off. The next place we're going in the next nugget is implementing the new switch configurations. I hope this has been informative for you and I'd like to thank you for viewing.